Hello everybody, this is Roman in Ukraine. So I'm in the center of Lviv. Uh, we woke up this morning to news uh, that was kind of anticipated yesterday. Uh, there's uh, widespread bombings from Russia over all of Ukraine and uh, and fighting in the east and possibly in the south. Those, though those reports are contradictory. I think we're, you know, entering a time where everyone's going to want to know everything that's going on, but information will be sparse and contradictory, both from... Uh, from the fog of war and from deliberate misinformation. Uh, Lviv is like pretty calm, but you know, everyone's on edge and there are lines, not super long, but but there are lines uh, near all the ATMs, which is why I went out this morning. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I feel perfectly safe in Lviv. Uh, my thoughts are with the young men and women who are on the front. What else can I say that might be informative? I know one uh, one Ukrainian soldier who is uh, thrilled because he can. He's a veteran and he wants to get back into the fight. I think uh, the media sort of portrays this uh, perception of soldiers that they're all horrified by their work, and that's certainly true for some of them. But you know, as I as I was well well aware when I was in the U.S. Army. Platoon, infantry platoon leader. Uh, there are some guys who uh, who like to fight, young, especially young men. And uh, God bless those maniacs, because Ukraine needs them now. Uh, what else have I heard? Uh, I mean, there are, I don't know, half a dozen or a dozen cities of a uh, half million or more people. You know, like Mariupol, uh, Kharkiv, like. There's, there's a limited, it's really limited what you can do with uh, 200,000 soldiers and I think Ukrainians, Ukrainians resolve and, and willingness to fight is, is quite high and Russia as I've, as I've written in uh, numerous essays like their, their main thing is to appear strong that's for them that's what's on bottom of the stack of turtles metaphorically speaking you know that's like the fundamental thing is always appear strong, and I think they'll be they'll be very careful to to not uh, not do anything that makes them appear weak. Although perhaps that's already too late if this uh, conflict doesn't go the way they want. So uh, so those are my thoughts. Oh, here's another kind of non-standard take. Um, I've been in Ukraine for about 10 years, started a family here, started an IT company, proud to uh, be employing about uh, about 10 Ukrainians, good jobs, good reputation for the work we do. Um, and freaking Ukraine, <laughs> they won't renew my residency permit for the stupidest reason that you could imagine. Uh, I got my residency as a foreign Ukrainian, I had to produce a stack of documents that proved my my mother was born here in fact both my parents were but I could only prove my mother <laughs> and now like uh, 10 years later you have to do like a one-time renewal of your permanent residency <laughs> they just found a tiny little detail where like my mom used the middle name there was a middle name or pa her parents used it on the Ukrainian documents that doesn't appear on the American documents so the Ministry of Immigration is telling me to get out, even though I'm paying more in taxes to Ukraine than most Ukrainians earn in a year, or in two years for that matter. Uh, so, so that's really frustrating. Check out the essay, Ukrainian Bureaucrats and Russian Tanks, to get a, to get a taste of uh, just the incompetence and sadism of Ukrainian bureaucracy. It's on my blog, Roman in Ukraine. Although, kind of complaining about that now it seems petty, given that, given that so many lives are being risked right now, being lost. But there's that. So I had plans anyway because of this, and uh, because of this sort of like 
bureaucratic thing and also just the desire for American life, uh, the convenience of American life. After 10 years, I was planning to move back to the U.S. in sort of uh, pretty soon, actually, March, April. I kind of feel guilty leaving now. Um, so that's that, like, short term, I'm safe. Uh, thoughts and prayers to the young men and women on the line. And we'll just uh, stay tuned, stay tuned for, for good information to come out of this fog that's, uh, that's currently over Ukraine. Uh, and that's about it. Maybe I'll do I'll do regular updates. So revive my YouTube channel after a long hiatus. And there's a monument to uh, to Ukraine and our national poet Taras Shevchenko, who wrote, uh, "What are these Muscovites doing in our torn open graves? Maybe they're looking for an ancient parent." If they could only find one, our children wouldn't be crying.